Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Thank you so much for joining us for the broadcast today. I'm delighted that you have a heart passion to want to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you can, reach over and grab your Bible and open with me as my Bible sits open to the third chapter of Titus, Titus chapter 3. I'll begin reading at verse 5 here in just a moment. We are doing a verse-by-verse study through the book of Titus on these broadcasts, and I hope very much that you are enjoying them. While you're getting your Bible, I will get also something on which you can jot some notes. We try to give a very, very clear outline of the passage as we walk and teach our way through them. I've got a gospel tract in my hand. Do you know what a gospel tract is? A gospel tract, and by the way, the word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S, gospel tracts. I'm talking about a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. The main thrust of the ministry here at Bible Tracts Incorporated is the printing of gospel tracts. We print them and ship them out all over the world in different languages. That's what we do. We do not want God's workers to be in want for tools to do the gospel work. I'm going to say more about God's gospel tracts here in just a moment, but to get us ready for the Bible study here of Titus 3, let me give you this story. John Newton, he's the man who was the author of the well-known hymn, Amazing Grace. He was a miserable man at age 23. He had been involved in an immoral lifestyle and was engaged in the heartless, cruel African trade, a slave trade, but he was fed up with his sinful way of life. A crisis came, came to his life on March the 10th, 1748, on board a ship that was caught in a violent storm. There, thinking all was lost, Newton cried out in terror, and he cried, Lord, have mercy on me. Well, suddenly, the word mercy struck him with great force. If anybody needed it, he did, he thought. At that moment, he believed on Jesus Christ as his Savior, and God forgave his sins and broke the power of his wicked lifestyle. Well, in the verses before us here in Titus, both the words mercy and grace are mentioned. Sinners are saved because of God's mercy. Sinners are justified by God's grace. Sinners are washed and renewed by the Spirit of God. I think... What we're told here is that sinners are saved from sin's guilt, and they can be saved from sin's dominion over them. I think that's exactly what it teaches here. Join me in your Bible, Titus, please, in chapter 3. Dear friend, Bible Tracks Incorporated has a mission statement. The mission statement, it goes like this, taking the word of God to all the world, 80 years and counting. This is our 80th year of sending out gospel tracts all over the world. The one in my hand right now, the gospel tract says, how can a person be away? That's the title. How can a person be away? Now, friend, if you've never gotten a gospel track and you're questioning whether gospel tracks work, get this one. This one works in every culture and every country in which it gets printed. People come to Christ through this track. How can a person be away? Multiple thousands of Muslims have come to Christ through this track. How can a person be away? It very clearly uses a clear illustration that you need a person to save you. Not a religion, not good works, a person, and that person's name is Jesus Christ. How can a person be away? At the end of my broadcast, my announcer is going to come back on. He's going to give you three ways by which you can give to us your name and your mailing address. If you'll do that, we will send you, we would love to send you, free of charge, a complete sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracks. This one, How Can a Person Be Away, will be in there. It's a powerful track. Get the tracks. 
share the tracks, extend the gospel, read the tracks. You may need to read the tracks to come to Christ yourself. Get them. We would love to send the tracks to you. If you can't stay to the end of the broadcast, just go to our website, which is Bible, you know how to spell, Bible Tracks, Inc. Dot org, BibleTracksInc.org. Well, my Bible here is in front of me, Titus 3, beginning at verse 5. Here is what the Bible says. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his, God's mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Stop, please, right there. Now, verses 3 through 7 is a section which I've titled this way, Our converted life, our converted life. Again, that's verses three through seven. In walking through these five verses, I've been giving a one summary word title to each of the verses. Let me give you for all five verses right now. Verse three, I call the depravity in me, the depravity in me. Verse four, the devotion to me. The word is devotion. Verse 5, the deeds by me. The deeds by me. Verse 6, the deliberateness towards me. God is deliberately acting towards me. Verse 7, the declaration about me. Now, that's the outline. And God's emphasis in verse 5 is that my good deeds, your good deeds, nobody's good deeds contribute one ounce towards our salvation. For anybody to be saved, God had to take pity on their helpless estate and of his own will, out of his own love, God had to bestow mercy on us. Now, you know I like to outline and make all my points alliterative. You know I like to do that, but sometimes using alliteration can really get in the way of clarity, and I think verse 5 and 6 is those kind of passages. I'm not going to use alliteration. Verse 5 says that my righteous deeds are worthless, but God's merciful deeds are powerful. In his mercy, God provides what's called here the washing of regeneration. This washing, beloved, is not has nothing to do at all with water baptism. This is the washing connected to regeneration or the new life work done by the Spirit of God. Regeneration refers to being born again or becoming alive spiritually. Over in the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 26, that verse says that we are washed by means of the Word, the Word of God. 1 Peter, chapter 1, verse 23, says that we are born again, not by means of a corruptible seed, but by the incorruptible seed of God's Word. God used the declaration or God used the presentation of His Word, His gospel Word, to us to bring about our new birth. Nicodemus, John chapter 3, Nicodemus sat with Jesus. Nicodemus heard Jesus speak. He heard the word of God, the living word of God, and he believed in what he said. That's how he was saved, but that's how everybody gets saved. The story of John Newton that I told at the beginning of the broadcast, he's a great example. Yes, there was no Bible verses shared with him on that night in the storm, But friend, John Newton's mother had poured God's word in his life all of his growing up years. That night, all of the work that she had done of planting the word of God, watering with her prayers and tears, came to fruition because of the mercy of God. And at the moment of believing in Christ as our Savior, whether it's John Newton or you or me, at the moment we believe on Christ as our Savior, a washing away of all of our sins occurs. Why? Well, listen to 1 John 1, 7. It says, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. Verse 5 here in Titus 3 also says that at salvation, the Holy Spirit renews us. At the time of a physical birth of a baby, a new life comes into the world. We know that. That baby had spent nine months in the mother's womb, but now a whole new existence begins. Well, 
at the moment of spiritual birth, a new life begins. The old life is now set aside for a new existence. Just as a physical baby grows and develops, so too a new spiritual child in Jesus Christ grows and develops. That new life in the believer begins it's to make itself evident. It begins to show up. You may be asking right now, Pastor Mark, can that new life, can this new style of living, can that really happen in my life? Oh, friend, my answer is yes, yes, and a thousand times yes. You know why? The answer is right here in verse 6. I'm going to read verse 6 again. He has just said in verse 5 that there's been a regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. And verse 6 says, which, referring to the Spirit of God, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. There's the answer. The Holy Spirit has been shed abundantly on our lives. I love that word shed. It means to gush out. At the moment you and I believed on Jesus Christ, the whole fire hydrant of God's Holy Spirit work was was just let loose and we were poured upon with the Spirit of God. I grew up part of my life in the south side of Chicago and on hot summer days, I remember going down a street and seeing some fire hydrants just opened up and kids were out there enjoying the gushing water coming out of that fire hydrant. Every time I read this verse, I think of that. Friend, that's what's happened to you spiritually at the moment you receive Christ as your Savior. The Spirit of God is let loose and gushed out, shed abroad, abundantly on your life. Can you live this new life? You can through the Spirit. A lot of people have asked me, maybe you're asking me today, you don't believe in Jesus Christ You've never received him as your savior and you're wondering, well, if I can never receive Christ because I can't live the Christian life, my friend, you can live a new and godly life because the spirit of God will be gushed out on you the very moment, the very instant you by faith pray to receive Jesus Christ as your savior. From then on, the life which you live, you live in your fleshly body, that from then on, that life, you'll be living by the faith of the Son of God who loves you and gave himself for you and gushed on you with the Spirit of God. It's no longer you that's living. It's no longer me that's living. Christ living in us and through us by the power and enablement of the Spirit of God using the Word of God to transform our life. Friend, if you've never received Jesus Christ as Savior, your present life is a life of disaster and despair. Oh, it may be successful on every level except one in the eyes of God. You are dead in your trespasses and sins, but God loves you. You're on your way to hell, but God loves you. So God came to earth, took on flesh, dwelt among us to perform a barricading work. He loved you and died on the cross, and shed his blood He was buried and rose again the third day to provide salvation for you, but you must receive him and receive him now. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.